Hi everyone, it's Arthur here at Arthur Ease Your Mind on YouTube. And tonight I have with me my third person coming to my channel. And it's the wonderful Mel from Chicago. The Aloha. Thank you. Hello, Mel. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? I'm well. How about you? We're having a heat wave in Chicago. Got to be 38 today. Oh my God, you wear a bathing suit? I was barbecuing no TC. <laughs> I've got my lucky Aloha shirt on. My dog. Oh, isn't that adorable? Pictures on it. <laughs> well, it stopped raining here, so the sun actually came out this morning. It was raining here, so anyway. <laughs> yeah, but the last couple of days, I mean, we've I've got a moat around my apartment building, so all I need is alligators. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So we've got a lot of good questions tonight. And what do you want? Do you want to just broach? A little bit about what we think is going on in New Hampshire right at the moment. Well, you know, I can't, you know, a long, long time ago, I've said it and you've said it, um, that when I saw Nikki Haley throw her hat in the ring, I said, she's going to be a big contender against Trump. And everybody said, well, they don't think she's going to get him, blah, blah, blah. And she's winning in New Hampshire right now. And I don't know. I haven't. I just went in there and watched briefly. Mm -hmm. But she's giving a Trump a run. She's giving Trump a run for his money. And, you know, he's going to try to make her look bad. My guides tell me, well, didn't take a psychic to figure that one out. And he's going to try to do the character assassination and all that. But the more he picks on her, the more that's going to drive people closer to her. Mm hmm. It's going to start coming out with stuff about her that's not true, just like he does the judges, just like he does everybody else. But he sorely underestimated her. I don't like her politics. I don't agree with her politics, but she's smart and she's smarter than Trump. Uh, so everybody, please don't send any emails about, you know, Nikki Haley. I'm not for Nikki Haley. No, no. But, I, and you're right. We've both been saying and I, I felt that she wins New Hampshire and that she wins South Carolina. Uh, You've been saying it a long time. And I've been kind of saying, you know, Nikki Haley, I, when she first threw her hat in the ring, I said, boy, she's going to be, I, I forgot exactly how I said it. It's going to be but the rest of it was that she'll give Trump a run for his money. Mm -hmm. and with New Hampshire, I never felt, I could be wrong, but I either, you know, I, I it was having a hard time seeing Trump winning. So, and you've said it too. Just let everyone know we're recording this about six o'clock central time. So right. the, the polls are still well, up. The results aren't out yet. Right. And um and those robocalls that you know that people were calling in telling people not to vote in the primary for Biden. Oh the AI? Yeah. Yeah. And it was uh it was uh, yeah, AI, but uh, they'll find who was behind it. And I see those people prosecuted. So, oh, yeah. Um, oh, yes. And I just heard earlier on that Biden's doing pretty well in New Hampshire. So good. Yay. New uh, Hampshire, the Florida of the, of the North. Well, yeah, right. Well, Trump was having a heart, not a heart attack, but a hard time in court because he's telling his lawyer, but he's whispering in court, but the primary's Tuesday. When his lawyer was saying, oh, I was exposed to COVID, I tested negative, but I've got symptoms. And the judge is like, that's not going to work. <laughs> However, one of the jurors ended up being sick. So, Well, but there's alternate jurors. Exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so New Hampshire. Um, can I just touch on something real quick? Do you mind? Sure, go for it. I'd like to talk about future events. Sure. Sure. Um, Sometimes when we predict a future event, um, you know, if it if the if that event doesn't happen, it doesn't mean our guides were wrong. It means that sometimes what we can be hooked into telepathically and not know it will be what most people want, their wants and desires. Um, it could also mean that the future is mutable. The future is not written in stone. Right. So like uh, when T. Rump <laughs> ran against Hillary Clinton, all of us had predicted that uh, Hillary would win. We weren't wrong. She did win the popular vote. Correct. Yeah. 
So sometimes there's that little twist. Um, but if it doesn't come out exactly, you know, maybe we misinterpreted the information. There's a lot of variables. Or but there's a lot of free will, too. A lot of free will. That's exactly right. That's mm -hmm. what I want. Thank you for saying that. Um, so I think that free will can also determine. Mm -hmm. So you can, and the energies change. And a lot of times as psychics, we're hooked into the energies of things. So, you know, we might predict something today and then the energy could change and we're hooked into that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of variables, but we have free will. <laughs> well, my joke is always a client will call on Friday. I'll say, yes, you and your boyfriend will talk, but don't call him. Monday, she calls and says, well, you know, I called him and he broke up with me. I'm like, well, because I told you not to call him. That <laughs> You changed the outcome. You know? Or, yeah, you talked to him. <laughs> yeah, but not, the outcome you wanted. I said not to call him, you know. I get that, too. Well, yeah. you told me not to call and I did. And now what? And I go, my, I don't know. Yeah, my it. joke is I tell them what not to do on Friday. They call me Monday, said they do it. How can I fix it? I think a lot of times they want us to fix it, and sometimes we can't. No, they have, no, it's it's um, they, they do it on their own. Have free will, yeah. you know. Um, don't call your boyfriend. She called him. You know, don't put your hand near the hornet's nest. You get stung, right? Um, yeah. And then they want to blame us. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. But I'm that, not being cynical to everybody out there in YouTube land. I'm not being cynical, but I think this conversation. We're being honest. We're being honest. Exactly. And because, you know, we're human, we make mistakes too. Or what is going to say, well, are you mistaken about the outcome of the, you know, of the general election? No. Uh, well, you know what? Trump could easily win. Not easily. Trump could win if he's, if he's still in the running. The point I'm trying to make is the future can be changed, but for this election, everybody has got to get out and vote. Right. That's where I, every show is vote, vote, vote. In fact, I think we do merchandise of t-shirts that say vote, vote, vote. It's like, you know, don't call your boyfriend. Well, I called him, he broke up with me. Well, you all did talk. You know, if you don't get out and vote, that could very easily put the opposition ahead. So vote. Yeah. Well, not to, I think I brought this up before is like two weeks, three weeks before Hillary and Orange Madness were going at it. I told my friends, you got to vote. You, you don't sit on your behind but. and think that everything's going to be fine. It's not. In fact, I keep on picking up in two weeks before the election, something's going to come down. So we have to get out and vote. And everybody's like, oh, no, she has it anyway. And then, you know, everything comes out from what's his name at the FBI. And all of a sudden there's all the craziness and, and Trump gets in. And well, I think they planted that strategically. I don't think Comey did it to make her lose, but it was planted strategically. There was something done. You know who planted it? It was, it was, it was, I think Trump was behind it. I know it was. Oh, yeah. And so was, I think, you know, playbook from Putin. Um, and I told Gary when I saw that, I said, Gary, I'm really nervous now. This could very easily cost her the election. Yeah. Well, and, then I, and then I remember it was one of the commentators on one of the TV shows. I, I, I think it was on MSNBC. Was it Lawrence O'Donnell? I forget. But he said, you know, we could easily wake up the next day and Trump would be president. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> well, there's an old saying, when you sleep through democracy, you wake up to. Um, Palitarian. Yeah. I like that. So. You know, ease your ease your minds, everybody. But the future can be changed, and a lot of it depends on the actions we take. Right. And so and we have, we have to vote. And right. that's another. I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's, that's another good. reason why it's like everyone. We have to send out as much positive love and light to the world in every nook and cranny that is out there. Yeah, I had somebody say that sounds so airy fairy. I said I don't care if it sounds airy fairy, but it works. It does work. Plus. We also can't lose our voices and speak up against inequity, inequality, yeah, um, totalitarianism, um, all of that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. and and you know, put an end to the hypocrisy. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the saying was if you sleep through democracy, you end up to a um dictatorship. There we go. So 
so anyway, it's it's i just wanted to touch on that briefly. i'm glad you did you know because people think you know it's like yeah i put more more water in my magic eight ball so it should be right but you know you never know <laughs> i like that i used to have one of those as a kid you know what i and what i would do is i'd ask a question if it wasn't the answer i like i keep asking Take the question <laughs> Well, actually, I have an app. I have I have an app on my phone with a little, you know, yeah, magic eight ball. I see people do that with the cards, and they keep going and going. Well, the cards that they, they want. Until how they many times did you go? How many times did you ask the cards? <laughs> well, I so can you ask again? Can you ask again? Can you ask again? It's like right. it's like well, you get to the point where the guides are just going to give you gobbledygook, and it's not going to make any sense. Well, so, I mean. If you keep asking again and again, they're gonna they're gonna be like, we've already told you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like when people say, you know, I pray to God every night he doesn't answer me. And I said, Yes, he does. The answer is no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, there's a there's a really good book when bad things happen to good people. And and, and Rabbi Krishna in that book, and I might be misquoting, but I've read it numerous times. He says that um, you know, the universe is not like some cosmic vending machine. Oh, and yeah. If you put gold coins, you'll get gold coins back. That it has rough edges. And so, you know, well, God God didn't grant my prayer. God's not in a land's lamp. It doesn't work that way. You get what, you get what you're supposed to have, not what you want in a lot of times. Maybe you're not supposed to have. What he says is the universe has rough edges and diseases happen and plane crashes happen and wars happen, which are tragic. But maybe God has nothing to do with that. Maybe God is just too busy being God or running the universe. And God says, here it is, you all. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have the free will to do what you wish, right? Right. And if you screw it up, then you have to own that, not me. <laughs> well, I also equate it to like being a psychic. We get the script a couple of days ahead of time, but God can do the ultimate rewrite. Correct. That's right. Oh, I like that. We've got the script, but you know, God can do the edit or the rewrite. I like that. Yeah. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> use it. I mean, well, I'll say I used to be a writer. So. My friend Arthur says. Yeah. yeah, he says a lot, but don't listen to him. But <laughs> all right. So we've got some good questions here. One of them comes from I'm gonna sound like a high school substitute teacher. I'm gonna every name i'm going to mess up here but um user cx5z whatever howdy do you see any american earthquakes coming up that causes disruptions thank you howdy back well most of yeah. earthquakes cause a tiny disruption by virtue of the fact it's an earthquake i was that's not meant to be cocky it was which is no, very it was a dry joke, okay. I, I got that I got that fortune cookie one time. <laughs> I think what they're asking is, do we see anything that, that's going to be uh, earthquakes hitting in the U.S. that are going to be super major or catastrophic? I do see some quakes happening, of course. They're always going to happen. But, you know, I see some big ones coming, like uh, Southern California, Northern California. You know, I think I'm not an, ex I'm not an expert on earthquakes. But mm -hmm. even I think a six is a pretty good size quake. Oh, yeah. So I see some disruptions, but not cataclysm. I was talking to a friend the other night. And I said that I saw actually last month. I said I saw something north, very north, an earthquake. And then she called me. She's in Fairbanks. She said we did have an earthquake. Yes, yeah. yeah. Alaska's due for a big shaker. I had a cousin that lived there in that 1962 or 63 earthquake. Mm. My husband was in the military. And it was pretty bad, but I do see Alaska getting hit by a big quake, but, um, but not, I don't. My guys aren't telling me to get the hell out of here, you know, so if they do, I do, you know, I've got my earthquake bag too, but you know, it's just in case, oh. but I mean, I lived through the Northridge and I would never want to live through something like that again. Well, I heard they're horrible. I've never been in an earthquake. I don't think I want to be. My baby grand ended up in the middle of the living room. It just rolled and i've got carpet so at the, at, the, at the time and it was just like my god that had gone through the wall my piano's doing the hula down in the middle of my floor <laughs> exactly no. just stay there i gotta get a skirt for you <laughs> but, 
Uh, I hope your bookshelves are attached to the wall. Oh, these are bolted. You know, to, yeah. I mean, in Los Angeles, everything's bolted. I mean, I don't hang pictures. We have like these strips of metal and you hook them in. Because I got a four by eight mirror in my dining area Ooh. and it bolted to the wall, basically. So it's good. It, that's what they use in some of the, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, museums out here. Oh, area's going to have a mild quake because we're in a fault. That just hit me. My light bulb just went on. Yeah. Looking at my pictures behind me, and I can see more. <laughs> Betty, right. by, a, by a wire. You want to ask one and you want to alternate questions? How you want to do it? Whatever you, what do you feel comfortable doing? I've got one from Florad who says, now if I'm repeating yours, let me know because I shared your post on my community page. Okay. Uh, Dun Dunslova or Dunslova, the female running against Putin has been arrested. Will she be safe? Um, I don't think that he's going to off her or Navalny for that matter, because then they would create martyrs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what he doesn't want to do is create a martyr. Okay. Um, I think with her being arrested, I see people in Russia, especially moms, protesting in the streets because they're going to be tired of their sons getting killed. Mm -hmm. You can't arrest that many people. And people pro protesting saying, wait a minute, we want our candidate. Um, he's going to make up some BS. That's why he had her arrested, but everybody knows it's BS. Well, anybody that runs against him gets arrested. So, you know, or, or, the window. or poisoned, <laughs> but, or, or pushed out, you know, I love it when first he floor. said, oh, they felt the first floor window. That's my joke. It's like a lot of people don't get that joke, but you know, I don't see her being pushed out a first floor window. How's that? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. we know that he shot down that plane though, for the, that guy that was, um, that tried to go against him. Yeah. And he said, oh, it was a mechanical. Yeah, the, the, the missile you fired at it to shoot it down. <laughs> yeah, because there's, I mean, they also found shrapnel in all the bodies and stuff, so, you yeah. know. But I think, um, you know, a fair trial in Russia is like unheard of. But um, she will be held for a long time, at least until whatever, but after the election, if there is a such thing. <laughs> I mean, how can you have one person running, nobody running against them, and he wins? Can you explain that one to me? <laughs> no. Well, yeah, but... How can you have an election? Why have an election? Yeah. Well... well we it, have for it, Putin. I mean, hello. Yeah. Well, I've been predicting, and I've been saying this for a while, that I don't see him around after the 1st of April. Okay. So whether he's... Him incapacitated in some way or he's gone out of a window or they took him on that train and ended up being like the murder or or express right you know i see a lot of protests in russia i do and in israel as well the women they're protesting because they want their they want the hostages brought home and netanyahu mm -hmm. is going to be another one that's going to go oh yeah so I agree here's All right. a, while we're, while we're speaking of putin hi mel this is from Klebanov 12. Hi, Mel and Arthur. Love your show. Thank you. Thank you. President Putin has been supporting Daniel Ortega of Nicaragua, and his government is leading a repression. Will El Salvador invade Nicaragua to remove Ortega? I see Ortega being removed, but I don't think that El Salvador is going to invade however now what uh, wait ortega is in one country i'm sorry of uh, nicaragua um okay yeah they were nervous uh in belize about nicaragua as well mm -hmm. uh but um you know if ortega tries to start invading surrounding countries like putin did in ukraine then those countries surrounding will will stand up and i think they're already getting military armies and things prepared just in case Ortega tries any um, shenanigans. I get I stopped in his tracks. That's what I pick up. Exactly. Um, but I think um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I think if um, if he tries shenanigans they're going to fight back. Mm -hmm. Then they might invade. But you're right. I see him gone. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happens to him, but I see him removed. 
let's hope it's the global shift that we're going through and he just doesn't survive. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. So let me get, I, oh, hold on. I lost my, um, I lost my, my questions. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait, wait one second. Oh, darn it. And while Miles finding his questions, I'd like to remind everybody, please go to his page, subscribe, become a member. And when you're done his page, come to mine and subscribe. Thank you. Hit the thumbs up and the bell. And the, the bell. bell. Ring my bell. Okay. Here we go. Noberto Lara says, hi there. Hope you guys are doing great. We are. Thank you. Oh, and everybody, by the way, Call Arthur to get a reading. He's wonderful. His his readings are excellent. So yeah. Just dial that phone. How do they get a hold of you? I always say that Sanders board on Wilshire, but uh, <laughs> or Dow. No, um, basically it's ease your mind. Arthur ease your mind dot com. A R T H U R E A S E Y O U R mind M I N D dot com arthur easyourmind.com or you can call at 310-494-5955 or as mel would say 310-494-5955 and by the way and by the way everybody out there i've got openings going to africa so if you're interested you can call my office at eight four seven five nine zero five four one one or go on my website www.meldor m-e-l-d-o-e-r-r dot -E -E com and you'll see the brochure there uh the rhine river there's one level that sold out already so that's pretty cool um but get a reading from um uh, arthur <laughs> thank you Oh. And, and you just gave all your information if somebody wants a reading with you. Because everyone should know by now that if it wasn't for Mel, I wouldn't be here. Well, mom and dad had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I didn't do anything. Just you, you, encouraged, little... you encouraged me. Yeah, like a push off the cliff. Right. But um, yeah, the story as the story goes, Mel said, I had a reading with Mel. And it was this, the second reading. And he said, why aren't you doing a YouTube page? And I just said, are you on crack? <laughs> and he said, I don't, I might be, but you know, you still, you know, you do, well. do you guys meditations? And, and then Mel was kind enough to have me on his show last March and the rest is history. So thank right. you. Mel. There you go. See, you knew you could do it. I knew you could do it. You just need a little nudge. I didn't have ma I didn't have enough water in my magic eight ball, so I was not you sure. You just need a little push, boot on your behind to push you forward. What else? <laughs> well, you know, we're both Aries. We need that sometimes. Aries need that. We're busy pushing everybody else forward, but, but we need somebody to just bitch smack us. <laughs> I know it's 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 like we push everybody, then our lives become Sisyphus. I know it's weird, right? And I was like, yeah. Hey, bye. Well, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so there you go. All right. Uh, Norbert, Norbert, no, 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 Norberto Lara says, "Hope you guys are doing great. We are." My question is: the governor of Florida dropped out of, now that he's dropped out of the presidential race. Is there a chance that he'll get impeached or removed from being governor? I don't see him impeached or removed from being governor. I just don't see him reelected. <laughs> no, I. I don't, I don't see him lasting after this. It's a one-time gig for him. I don't see him really staying around. I see him going into the private sector. That's frightening. I know, really. <laughs> Maybe he'll go back to teaching. I wonder if he'll unban the books he banned. <laughs> well, you know, Bill O'Reilly got really mad because they banned one of his books. But why would they? You know, I heard that, but Bill O'Reilly is like... A right winger why why would they get mad because why would they ban his book well they banned the bible in a couple of places too well i get that <laughs> yeah, but whatever it, it is what it is yeah but was it banned in florida mm -hmm. 
But you'd think the saint would like it because Bill, Bill. Yeah, Riley. but it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It was the. It's the school board people that are crazy. All they need is like two people to complain about a book, and it gets banned. Well, I stand into that. Oh, so do I. Book banning. I mean, I mean, there are limits, of course. You're not going to put porn in schools. I get that. <laughs> but I, I see like they're going to be able to. There's laws coming to say you cannot ban like Catcher in the Rye or. You know, or the life them. of uh, the life of uh, Rosa Parks. That's the one that really ticked me off when I read that one. Uh, what was the one with Holden Caulfield? The character was that. That wasn't Catcher in the Rye. That was. Um, yeah, that was Catcher in the Rye. Yeah. Th those were banned. I mean, how? When I was in high school, we had to read those. <laughs> I mean, are, are they going to be next? The Hobbit. <laughs> well, actually, there was somebody. God, who was it? She was saying, well, if you really watch The Wizard, I thought of you when I heard this, when you really watch The Wizard of Oz, I think those munchkins, they were doing like satanic rituals in the background. I'm like, oh, come on. They could barely speak English. It's like, what planet is, are they on? I mean, come on. You know, that's a bunch of crock, but there are people, the people that will fall for it. That's my, you know, that's my favorite movie. Of oh, I know. And that's when I told, when I mentioned Ray Bolger. You said, I got the book you sent me. That's so cool. What I loved about that book the most is the author spoke to everyone before they died. That's cool. That's yeah. right. From Buddy Epson, who was going to be, you know, in there. And then Ray Bolger was already contracted to do the Tin Man. I mean, the, the uh, Scarecrow from day one. Right. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. But it was, it, it's a fun read. Yeah. But I uh, character, I don't know. You know, I like them all. Um, I like the scarecrow, but I believe it or not, I like the Wicked Witch of the West because she would scare me. Oh, so Margaret Haberton, she's wonderful. Now, there's a place here in Long Beach, California, Bixby Knolls, outside of Long Beach, where it's a community where all the little people ended up having their, they built houses and little communities. So you drive through it, like, it's still there, these little houses, you know, that they lived in and stuff. So, <laughs> wow, really cute. So, as far as the governor, I don't see him really being ousted per se mm -hmm. but i don't see him going anywhere afterwards his wife may not like it but it is what it is hey, what ooh, do you think? how long that marriage is going to last my psychic light bulb just went on when you said that but <laughs> well i like when billy jean king said maybe one of his children is going to be gay what is he going to do about it well anybody that's homophobic as he is well we won't go down that road we don't we don't want to go to youtube jail so no 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 we just send them love and light there you go all right <clears throat> you go ahead you're the next one. Oh, here's a good one um shall be critical thinker hi auntie mel and arthur Will information come out about the soon-to-be ex-wife of the prosecutor that is working with Fanny that she is either paid off or she just wanted revenge against her ex-husband? I think it'll come out that uh, she contacted them to tell them what was going on uh, and that they kind of solicited that. Um, it's more like revenge ab about her ex-husband. <laughs> But I think that his soon-to-be ex-wife is very jealous and probably accused him of 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 things he didn't do. Yeah, but do you know do you know why they broke up? No. She had an affair with her best his best friend. Well, there we go. He filed for so, divorce. So and this is why been sealed for two years. So that's why she's saying that oh, he did this, so it doesn't look bad for her. But I'm sure that there's um I'm sure there's an element of revenge going on there. Absolutely. Well, there's the, the word conspiracy comes up all around that. So it certainly does. It certainly does. You don't need to be Mr. Magoo not to see it. He might step down, but Fonny's not going to give up. Oh no. No, no, no. No, 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 And you know, who gives I mean, I think what they're trying to do is set it up for a mistrial. Well, she was, you know, doing this with him, so therefore it can't be a fair trial. I know where they're going with it. I know yeah. where they're going with it. But it's gonna come out that that's exactly what they were trying to do. Yeah, and, and she's gonna go after as a DA, we'll go after the ex-wife for trying to muck up a case. Got it. And put her fingers in it. <laughs> so, 
Ain't love grand. It, it, it is. Conspiracy is written all around it. And there are people that are going to come forward and say that uh, it was plotted to to try to change the outcome of the trial or to, to declare a mistrial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, I see a different lead prosecutor, but somebody who's going to be a junkyard dog as well. So <laughs> mm-hmm. watch, they'll think they'll come up with some stuff about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's enough when you read about the ex-wife and her shenanigans and they had agreed to keep everything sealed for two years ago because of, everything was going on she didn't want it coming out now all of a sudden she wants everything unsealed you know exactly well yeah what does that tell you but that's a legal battle there to get it unsealed (laughs) yeah yeah but i mean i i I love the fact that she's not she didn't really comment about it she filed something in court about it so it's like i'm not going to try this in the public court of public opinion i'm just going to court and get this done right (laughs) I mean, this is not her first time to the rodeo. Let's face it, people. You got that right. Um, but I think the guy she was having the affair with, I don't see that working out. I think of more friendship than it may have gone there once or twice, but I don't see it as like some long ongoing thing. Right. But also, he used to be a judge. I mean, he used to be, I mean, he's a really qualified person to be doing what he's doing. So right. on this trial. It's going to blow up in Trump's face. Really? You think so? <laughs> you're psychic is that true my guides say <laughs> okay um okay diane 8929 hi guys hi oh. diane um question will boris uh will boris is it epstein or epstein i don't know epstein boris <laughs> uh in With German, it would be Epstein. Yeah. But, um, will Boris Epstein, Trump's behind-the-scenes advisor, ever face justice for the damage he has done to our country in this lifetime? Yes. Yeah, that was simple. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, do you see indictments coming down there? Da. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> uh, um yeah i do it's the thing is anyone that's been in trump orbit i mean when he implodes they all it all it's like there's not a splatter guard to go around for them to wear they're all going to get hit right okay uh i see him indicted for stuff and i see him going down okay um I've got one here from Sean. Did you read this one? Oh, uh, you go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. From Charmin or Charmin 804. <laughs> Hi, Auntie Mel and Arthur. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. How do you see the election results in San Francisco this November? Will the incumbents maintain their seats or? Dot, dot, dot. I say the Democrats. <laughs> I don't know who's what, but I see Dems. You know, it's funny. A lot of these states that were that they were saying, oh, it's going to be, what was it, a red wave, right? Right. Red tsunami. Right, red tsunami. It wasn't even a pink drop. It was like not even pink hardly. Um, But a lot of the Dems and, and traditionally very red areas are winning. And I said this last night, I think we talked about it last night on the show that um, women are hopping mad because because of the whole thing with abortion and this and that, especially abortion. Uh, So I see a lot more blue waves hitting uh, and just pink trickles, maybe. Um, Typically, you know, elections are decided by the economy and the stock market and if the economy is good typically social issues aren't really um game changers for elections but in this election it will be because women are hopping mad even republican women are mad about yeah. the whole abortion thing and the roe v wade thing and now they're trying to uh they're trying to even control like uh the morning after pill or or 
contraception that you can't even do that. Well, if that's the case, then if a guy gets someone pregnant, then he should be forced to get a vasectomy. Oops, though they won't do that. Never, right? No. So I think polit I think social issues will be a big decisive part of this election. And that's why I see a lot of states turning, a lot of places turning blue or voting blue because, because women are hopping mad about the whole Roe v. Wade thing. And they should be. <laughs> but it's not only women. It's also the, a lot of, you know, men as well, you know. Right. That, right. That, because let's face it, a lot of times an abortion is not necessarily an unwanted pregnancy. It's, no, it's about yeah. a woman's life. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was Carl Rove that started with the whole social uh, stuff, you know, voting with, with Bush and all that kind of stuff, especially with the gay agenda. And, um, and it continued from there, but this time around it's, it's the social issues are, are on the ticket. They yeah. are. And these morons, sorry, entertainment purposes only, you know, they keep on putting up these restrictions and restrictions, restrictions, and they keep on losing. Don't they get it? Well, obviously, maybe they're not getting it, so they don't know. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Right. It just keeps getting crazier and crazier. It's going to be a wild ride. Buckle up. I mean, you know, the, the mag is, you know, for a while, they'll score a few wins. And it looks like, but, um, you know, they'll win a few battles, but they won't win the war. Well, it's like, remember the tea party, you know, with little tea hats and all that kind of stuff. Which was a precursor to typically what's going on now. I mean, it just get, kept getting further and further and further right. <laughs> right. And they say that, you know, some of us that are, that, that are Democrat are far left. But if we were as far left as they are far right, <laughs> oh, my God, it, would, it wouldn't be pretty. I mean, it would be horrible, actually. So I'm not far left at all, but I'm clearly not against the ultra, 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 far, far, far right either. That's frightening. <laughs> no, I think I used my Bible to hold up the uh, coffee table. Another story. <laughs> but they, I mean, but they interpret the Bible the way they want too, which is scary. You know, it's it's their that's own. Funny. It's become their own religion. Well, that's Christianity. Count me out. <laughs> yeah, really, it's a cult. You want to talk about helping people, loving people, caring, being inclusive, uh, being tolerant, accepting? Then, if that's Christianity, count me in. It's like I think it was in Arkansas where they were saying that all these there's six mega churches, and it was the casinos that helped the poor. <laughs> right. The churches didn't. Right. Okay. Well, I think we touched on this one. Carol Bark, if we ask this one, just tell me we'd ask it. Mm -hmm. uh, will, will Trump's co-conspirator that's going after Fawny Willis be indicted and convicted of of, of, of charge, be convicted of charges? Um, also, will Fawny bring lawsuit against him? Well, I do see her bringing a lawsuit against him and she's going to win <laughs> and then he'll badmouth her. But I do think at some point, we've already talked about this, I think it'll be brought forward that some some whistleblowers have come forward and say that, you know, that Trump and his team did, um, it was a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I, we did talk about that. But also, it was, I forget his name, but it was the same day that she, the ex-wife filed for stuff against Fonnie Willis was the same day this guy got filed or something. It was, it's just like, like, it's almost like, well, I was exposed to COVID and I have symptoms, but I tested negative. <laughs> right. Because <clears throat> he's whispering in her ear, don't forget the primary is on Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we didn't say he, well, he's like a mental midget sometimes. That's an insult to a mental midget. Really? So Deb Matthews asks, hi, Arthur and Mel. I like this is a really good question though. Do you see David Hogue, survivor of Marjorie Stoneman 
Douglas High School mass shooting and founder of Leaders We Deserve, getting into politics and holding federal office like Congress or the Senate. Yes, absolutely. And he should. And he's going to be so anti-NRA. It's going to make your head swim. I don't think he's going to be anti, you know, carrying anti being able to own a weapon, but really a lot more stringent background checks. A lot of people, you know, um, have a history or they're, or they're blinking red, mm -hmm. then they, you know, can't get a weapon. I see a lot more stringent gun control finally happening. It's mm -hmm. just not going to happen with what's going on in the house right now, but it will happen. So yes, I do see him. Mm -hmm running for political office. I do well. too. I, did, I you ever see, excellent. Did, did you ever see the time where he was walking through Washington, D.C., and Marty Taylor Greene was on his heels, yelling and screaming and trying to get his attention and just being who she is, and he just ignored her the whole time and just took the high road. And the more he ignored her, the crazier she got. You know, I, well, I, She just did that for a photo op session, session so she could look good. But I think when people tr stand up to her and out bully the bully, she doesn't know what to do. But I like the way he handled that. I mean, and what did she do? Did she finally stop? Because she's the one that looked BS crazy. She just kept on walking. And oh, good. It, it almost looked like she hired somebody to follow her yelling at him. You know, because that to me, that was like a photo op that shouldn't. It was a photo op. I saw that actually. It was disgusting. Yeah. The way she behaved. But um and he was a gentleman through the whole thing and, and rose above it. And I mean, I really feel him, people like um, Maxwell Frost from Florida, um, the, the these young people are coming up. The two guys in, in Tennessee, um, Jason's, the two Jason's. Oh, yeah, they're going to do really well. Yeah. I see them in politics. Yes. A long time. All right. And I love Jasmine Crockett out of Texas. I love, I just, of her <laughs> okay um well, this is a good one uh aces aces yay uh two three four two aces says trump lost a popular vote by almost three million against hillary but won the electoral college he will lose the popular vote again but but will the but will the magas cheat with electoral college court with will the megas cheat with the electoral uh college court system supreme court what is your prediction about this well i think they're going to really watch and if they try to put fake electors in to change it because they're not going to succeed right because what's going to happen is it's going to be like okay if they won this state then that casts the electoral vote and if some other electors come in and vote for Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or Donald Trump, it's going to be like, no, 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 no. There's going to be more conspiracy uncovered about fake electors, even in this election, but they'll nip in the bud before it gets out of hand. <laughs> That's what I pick up. What well, do you think? I agree with you. I, I do feel that they'll try. You got to, you know, they'll never not stop trying, but it's not going to work. That's what I feel. Especially there are too many eyes on everything i mean i do feel at one point the electoral college will be history so do i but you know ever notice when presidents um uh, the when the presidents um when they lose the electoral college they're the ones that saying oh we had to have do away with the electoral college but when they win it's like oh no we got to keep it yeah, but I mean, when you look at the thing with uh, Bush and and Gore, I mean, that was just insane. That was a Florida ballot. <laughs> didn't yeah, but, but also, he, he, um, I, I forget. I, I only. I don't think there's been a lot of Republicans that really won the popular vote. Mm -mm. You know, at all. Um. Okay. But anyway, but I, I, I see that things are going to catch up to everybody. Yep. I do too. All right. You got another one? Let's see here. I found one here. Okay. Go for it. Uh, DRC 1989 says Hi, Mel and Arthur. 
when the orange genius starts losing in court, will his MAGA legislators be fighting each other for the exit or will they quietly fall one by one as they too face charges and investigations? Um, I think it's a combination of both. They'll all be fighting over the red meat, but I still think that um, uh, <clears throat> they'll fall one by one as they have, because many of them will have to face charges. Oh yeah. So. I've been saying that as we get into the end of the first quarter of this year, once the trial starts in March, with trump after that thing gets underway then other people are going to the names will be released and all that kind of stuff is going to start hitting the fan but i don't feel that they're going to be going after them for insurrections they're going to be going after them for other things because i mean even jack smith did not go after trump for being an insurrectionist right you know so i mean they're all going to be heading for the door it kind of reminds me of you ever go to church and every Mass is over, everyone's real quiet, and they leave, and all of a sudden they run to the cars and try and get out of the parking lot at the same time. I know that fries me. Everybody, you know, you know, uh he said, I my I give you my peace, my geese, my peace, I give you offer this line of peace, and everybody does, and everybody's ah, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And then you're right, there's a rush to get out the door, and then they're swearing at each other as they're pulling out the parking lot. <laughs> what part of this did I just miss? <laughs> yeah, it's like that always fried me. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna rush like that to get out of the park line, why'd you even bother to come to church? I think a lot of times that's because that's for the show. Look at me. I go to church every Sunday. Well, what does that make you a good person? Not <laughs> I my grandma was in a little town in Connecticut, and that priest was like listening to the FedEx guy. I mean, you were in and out of that church in, in a half hour, if that. <laughs> so, so like I said, like, no wonder everybody goes to church. You're in and out of here in a half hour. Say three Hail Marys, take communion, and you're out of here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got, there's a church here that, it's a Lithuanian church that um, um, Danny Thomas used to go to, to pray to St. Jude. And I figured, oh, well, I'll just go there one It was a high, high mass, Lithuanian mass. I was there for three hours. It's like, get me out of here. Get me out of here. The pomp and the circumstance is kind of cool. <laughs> but still, I, I wasn't I wasn't prepared for it, you know. I was waiting for the cross to turn upside down with me being there. So uh -oh. holy water boiling. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, actually, you know, <clears throat> on another there was a little alcove for St. Jude. And so I was sitting there, you know, one day, and as an infant, my father prayed to St. Jude because I almost didn't make it. And so one day when I was like 15, my father handed me the stack of, of um, holy yes. cards for St. Jude oh. and said, here, start handing these out. And so when I went to the church, I heard this whisper, how am I helping my son? I said, well, father, and he goes, Monsignor. I turned around and had the purple. I said, sorry. He goes, you know, he starts talking about St. Jude and Danny Thomas. And I said, I understand that that's my dilemma. He said, what? I said, well, not that. Danny Thomas has passed. So I pray to him for St. Jude. <laughs> he fell over laughing. And and the, actually, I actually think my my worst St. Jude story with me is when I was in college, you know, in the newspaper. Thank you, St. Jude. Thank you, St. Jude. So I went to it was the Philadelphia Inquirer. So I went there and paid my money and said, but I want this to be the last, the last on the page. And like, why? I said, just put this last on the page. He looked and goes, you're crazy. I said, thank you. <laughs> so when it came out, I showed my friend the next day. It said, you know, thank you, St. Jude. Thank you, St. Jude. And the last one was says, you're all welcome, St. Jude. <laughs> my patron saint is St. Jude. That's my, my confirmation name is Jude. So <laughs> there you well, go. There's a, there's a shrine in, in Chicago, isn't there? For St. Jude? I don't live here. There's one to Our Lady of Guadalupe at uh, Maryville. That was uh, oh, I'm, now, now. Now I got to Google it and find out. Okay. We yeah, well, I grew up. There was a a Lady of Shestahova in in Doylestown, PA. Um. Oh, there's that's in Poland too. <laughs> yeah, it was the Black Madonna. Right. Do we have a time for a few more? Yeah, I, I'm actually out of questions, but if you have some, let's go for it. Um. Hello, Mel and Arthur. Will it? Will it be revealed that Justice Neil Gorsuch received dark money to vote against the people's interest? 
I don't know about him, but I but it is going to be revealed more about some justices that were getting gifts and things like that they did not disclose. And I see legislation passed to make that illegal. Mm -hmm. So, but there is some dark money, I'm sure, that uh, funded some of them. I'm just not so sure. I'm not sure if it's Gorsuch, but <clears throat> there's well, a few names I can think of. I've been saying for now two years, let's see if this prediction holds up, that Thomas is going to be stepping down probably this October before the election. And uh -huh. when Biden gets in, there's going to be some changes in 2025. And I've always said within three to four years or three to five years, there will be 13 Supreme Court justices. That's what I said. Because we now have 13 appellate courts. We had nine Supreme Court justices was those voted in when we had nine appellate courts. So that's okay. my rationale on it. Okay, I've got one more, I think. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, my question is, I got, a letter to I got a letter to register to vote again. I'm already registered to vote. Why do I have to register to vote again? Is there anything to worry about? So what I would do is go to where you need to register to vote and take your voter's registration card and that letter and say, I got this letter, what gives? And I would do that ASAP as soon as possible. I agree with that. Yeah. I get those sometimes. I'm already registered, but I, you know, I, and they send me occasionally a new voter's registration card, which is the same information as the old one, but I would still go check it out because, you yeah. know, well, there I'm, might be some bogus to it. I moved two years ago and they wanted me to redo everything. I'm like, but I'm already registered. But, you know, when you change your address, you know, to the post office, they won't want you to re-register. So but it's taken care of. I think it's just a, a clerical error. It's nothing nefarious or anything evil or anything uh, like that. We got through all the questions tonight. I know, really. And we're still, we're still breathing. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> all right. So next Tuesday, my show? Sure. Okay. What time? Well, we'll pre-record it. Uh, what time? Is seven o'clock? Yeah. Six, Six thirty, seven o'clock your time. All right. So next Tuesday. I'll to put down here next Tuesday, Arthur. Psychic. Okay. Got it. <laughs> next Tuesday. I so like everybody think about, you know, political question, world events, things like that. Uh, and, you know, you'll see it on our community board, but put them in the and, you know, you can ask questions below where we post those thumbnails on our community board because th these shows are pre-recorded. So, yeah, that way we can make mistakes and erase. <laughs> well, yeah, this is like doing live TV. What, what goes on there stays because <laughs> I'm too lazy to go through and edit the whole thing. <laughs> I'm not. I'll, I'll, I'll bloop. If I, you know, I'm known as the potty mouth psychic. So every once in a while, I've gone back to my own thing. And go, Take that out on YouTube, jail. <laughs> no, because I take it out, you know. Oh, there you go. All or right. I just put a big, you know, poopy emoji in front of my face. <laughs> there you go. No, right. it's been wonderful. This has been so Have much a great week. You're going to get more people to go to Africa. So, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Africa, Africa. It's going to be an. And I'm telling you right now, if you get people going to Africa, they get a free reading from me from today to they sign free readings. From hey, Africa. thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, I appreciate yeah. Anytime. All right. all right, people. Thank you for stopping by. Remember, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. All, all the good stuff. Thumbs up, and we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye.